Hey guys, Chamber Productions here coming back at you with another Transformers video review and in today's video I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Masterpiece MP5 Megatron. Now setting the figure off to the side, I do not have the packaging or anything, I got this figure used, but I do have the accessories and everything so we're all fine and dandy. So taking a look at, again, the accessories, he comes with his energy mace, which has been done with some clear plastic and some normal uh, purple plastic and then you got that, so you have a little mace for him to use, which is quite nice. Um, he does have his blaster that he uses in the um, 1986 Transformers the movie, which has been done in silver and purple, and it looks pretty nice, as you can see there. He does come with his kind of energy sword that he used, again, in the Transformers the movie, which has been done pretty nice as well. Some purple painted uh, plastic. And you got some silver there at the barrel, or at the barrel, at the hilt. And then the laser does come off in his purple plastic with some white paint there towards the base to kind of give it that energy flare-up effect. So, that is pretty nice. He does come with a little Crimzeek, which if my camera would focus, is done in translucent plastic, painted with a little bit of red. Very nice. He does come with a collector's card, which shows off the figure and everything and all of the stats and stuff that I cannot read. So there we have that. And then he does come with his instruction book, which has been done very nicely. I like the fact it's got, it's over prime written on the back, which is very nice to see. And then the instructions and stuff and other figures and whatnot. So very nice. But bringing Megatron back into view, and here we have MP5 slash MP05 Masterpiece Megatron. Now, some of you may be wondering why uh, I'm doing a video review of this specific figure. A, because I can. B, because I think it needs some modern recognition. And C, I think this is, an, this is a very important part of Transformers Masterpiece history. The first Masterpiece Optimus Prime would come out in 2003, but it wouldn't be until 2007 when we would see the very first Masterpiece styled Megatron, and here we have them. This would be the Mark I, so to speak, of multiple um, interpretations of G1 Megatron, whether it be MP36, Make Toys, Despertron, I mean, it just led to a whole branch of Masterpiece styled Megatrons, and uh, here's the start of it all. So, a little bit of a history lesson for you there, but here we have MP5 Megatron, again, honestly looking really stellar in his gun mode. This is truly a really realistic representation of the Walther P38 pistol, and truth be told, I think it's it holds up really well in today's standards. I think it cleans up a lot nicer than a lot of the modern representations of the Walther P38, um, or at least the style of Megatron, and I think it actually looks really good. It is extremely oversized for a pistol, um, of the size, the Walther P38 was chambered in 9mm, and there's just no way there is a handgun in the world that would fit this big in someone's hands. And I have huge hands. So, uh, yeah, there we have that. But, I mean, just the details and everything have been done very nicely. You got all the details in the grip. You got P38, you got that nice Decepticon insignia proud on the side of the slide. And then you do actually have some working features like a working safety switch and a working trigger, which is quite nice. And then... You know, you got all the nice little details and whatnot. And the barrel here. Fill focus. There we go. So, there we have that. You can remove the scope from the top of the gun, which, you know, makes an even more realistic representation of the Walther P38. Q, Q. But, you know, it's up to you. This is honestly how I display my figure with the scope on and everything. Because this gun mode just looks stellar. Like, it really does look incredible. But... You know, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, that's truth. Truth be told, that's about it. Um, you know, it looks really nice. Has a functioning trigger, a uh, functioning safety button, and that that's about it for the gun mode. I mean, the hammer doesn't work or anything. Um, but honestly, a fantastic looking pistol. Now, for the transformation of this figure, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's it's a process. It is very unique, though. I I I really like the transformation. Just due to how it works and everything, I think it is really unique. So just ahead of time, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the camera some because we are going to need it because this is honestly a tall figure when it's all transformed and into its robot mode. So we're going to go ahead and start off the transformation by removing the scope. And then, uh, um, yeah, 
So once you do that, take the entire top side of the gun here and untab it from the rest of the body, not like that and untab everything else. So take the top part of the gun, untab it, just like so. Gosh, the more I handle this figure for this uh, video, the more I realize it is going to be a nightmare to film. Okay, so for the rest of the transformation, we're going to split the trigger guard just like so, and then split the entirety of the handle just like this. And it will swing around just like so. And then we can go ahead and take these panels here, untab them just like so, and slide these whole sections down. Then we can take these pieces here and start to slide them up just like so. Fold that panel in. Come around to the inside of the uh, grip. Take these red panels here and untab them just like so. We can take these outer panels here. Well, I say that. You take these sections here, pull them out of the way, and then take these and kind of push them forward and then pull out the feet just like so. And then we take the foot, open it up, pull these sections out, pull out the heel, and then the bottom of the foot will slide into the heel just like so. And then we can take this section here and tab it into the inside of itself like so. And then push that up, close this panel, and then pull the trigger guard in and tab it into place while making sure all this stays tabbed in. Take this section here, rotate it in on a double hinge like so. Y'all can see that it's got a hinge and it will tab in just like that. And then uh, we'll leave it like that for right now anyway. Now we got that done, we've got to do the other side. So we're gonna repeat the exact same process, make sure this panel is untabbed, take this whole assembly here, slide it down on the slider hinge, and straighten all this out, push that panel in, and there we have the leg extended. Then come to the underside here, untab this section, take this section here, pull it out of the way, and then come around to the outside here, and then push this section in and kind of move it out of the way, and then come back to the inside here, and then pull this panel open, pull out the foot, trying to, yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention. This figure has a lot of ball joints on it, and truth be told, some of the panels don't like to stay on, so do not worry, it did not just break, it just decided to uh, pop off that little joint, and make sure this, that's in, yes, that is in. Tab that in, finish the leg up, and then fold this trigger guard section in. I am going to real quick tab this back in because that decided to pop off. This tabs in right there. Okay, perfect. Then we are, where are we? Take this section here, fold it forward. Take this section here, fold it forward. And then we take this on its double hinge and tab that into place. And then I think if I remember correctly, I always get mixed up on this part. Finish straighten this leg out right here. Again, stuff likes to pop off, so I apologize, but we're gonna go ahead and hinge the legs forward, like so, and then there we have the lower legs for Megatron done. So, um, yeah, there we have that. For the upper body, we're going to start off with taking these panels here, kind of pulling them out to the side. I'm gonna take this section here, untab it, push it down, take this section here, unpeg it, and rotate it to the side, just like so. Then from there, we can go ahead, separate this piece, push that forward, and then take this whole assembly here, untab it, pull it out and around, just like so. And then we take all this and slide it up on a slider hinge, just like so. And there we have some of the upper body. I'm, I can already tell I'm going to have to readjust this a little bit. But, um... Coming around to the back of the figure here, we can take this section back here, untab it just like so, and then we're going to take the arms here and push them out on these hinges like that, push them forward like so, and then we're going to take the hammer section here, and then, this is hard to film, my arm's getting tired, not going to lie. Focus, please, make my life easier. Take these sections here fold them out, and then take the hammer section here, and if it hasn't already, kind of push it out to the side. Take this whole section here and pull it out. Go ahead and rotate out the fist and have it into place. And there we have an arm ready to be um, 
put in with the rest of the figure. So give my arm a quick break here, pull this section out and down, just like so. Pull this section here out, fold out the fists, just like so. Pull this section out, make sure this is all out and extended and whatnot, which I did not do, my bad. Take this section here, just like so. And then we can bring all this up and into place, make sure that stays out the way. And then the arms will tab in after we slide in this strut here. So this whole strut will slide into place just like so, which will then allow us to tab in the arms like so. Push that off to the side, just like so. Plug that back on. For the arms, what you're gonna to wanna to do here is push them in like that. That way the elbows are a little bit more centered with the rest of the arms. So there you have the arms done, just like so. We can now take the lower body here and this will all tab into place, just like so. Making sure that stays fully extended. Readjusting the knee, just like so, so we can get this guy to stand. Please stand for me. There we go. So coming around to the back here, mainly from this point on, we're just straightening out the figure from the back side. Again, this is a long transformation. We're going to plug that in, just like so, flip it around. Plug this in, flip it around, just like so. Then once you get these sections straightened up, just pull them down. That way the barrel has room here at the back. But then after all that, there you have that done. This will stay folded down, and then this whole assembly here will tab in to the chest. And then you pull up on his helmet here, and that reveals the robot mode head. And, um, yeah, just make sure stuff didn't come untabbed. All right, so after all that, here we have MP5 Megatron in his robot mode. I'm going to take a minute to straighten him out and everything so he looks presentable for the character. For the character? Yeah, for the camera. But here we have MP5 Megatron. And after that abysmal of a transformation segment, in which I do apologize for, it definitely was kind of hard to do on camera, but thank you if you bared with me. Here we have Megatron in his robot mode. Now for my eagle-eyed viewers out there who may have been paying attention through that transformation segment, you will realize that this figure actually pays close homage to the original G1 Megatron toy in terms of the transformation. They basically base the entirety of this figure's transformation around the G1 figure. And for better or for worse, you know, it's definitely something unique and something that the more I played with it, the more I realized this transforms like the G1 figure. And honestly, you know, Megatron here, he looks pretty good. Obviously the legs are a little bit kib kibbly and um, they're definitely pretty kind of skinny for this character. But I mean, overall, this is Megatron uh, through and through. Now, some of you may be wondering, hey, why don't you add the fusion cannon on? And uh, yes, you can, and I do have it right here, but I'm not gonna add it on just yet because we're gonna take a look at the details and the, the Fusion Cannon with its sheer size and weight definitely does present a balancing problem for this figure. So uh, just taking a look at the details and whatnot, we can see the head has been done pretty nicely with some nice red eyes. I actually really like the way that looks. You know, you got that sinister frown right there. We can see all the nice silver details, red highlights, you know, the mechanical detail that's been presented on the inside of the arms and whatnot is very nice. And we can see all the detail on the inside of these skirt panels here as well is really nice. Just overall, it's a neat figure. Perfect is far from it. It, it really is. Um, but it definitely is a, a cool looking figure in my opinion anyway. Um, definitely not something you choose to represent the character um, to a perfect extent, there's definitely way better versions of this character out there, but just as a representation of Megatron, there's something about it that just has the essence of the character there. And um, just adding on the fusion cannon here, we can see that the fusion cannon is over half the height of the figure, and that, that's my main reason why I haven't added it on yet, but it just slides on just like so if I can do it without receiving a whole lot of issues here. Yes, we got it. So, um, there we have the fusion cannon on the figure, but it's suiting of the character, right? It's like a giant cannon, which I definitely do find it uh, fitting, again, of the character. He's just a maniac with a giant gun on his arm. 
really unique. Um, unfortunately though, um, he can't really hold it all that well. I mean, you can get it, get him to hold it, but it's definitely not without its flaws. So, I mean, yeah. And it does make the figure a little bit front heavy, not going to lie. Um, but he definitely does have the feet strong enough to kind of keep them posed with the cannon. So there we have the robot mode. Honestly, looks like Megatron has its flaws, but it's really unique. Now, just talking about the accessories real quick and the implication of the accessories, uh, you can uh, uh, have him wielding all of his different weapons and whatnot. Obviously, you saw him with the fusion cannon, and the fusion cannon has a nice little LED feature here. Uh, you have a little button right here on the side, which whenever you push it, shines a little LED light, which is pretty neat. But setting that off to the side, let's get his Energon mace, and um, he can wield this as well. So take the fist, push it back into the arm, and then this whole section will tab on to his hand like so. So you can get him flailing around his energy mace like so. And uh, he can hold it if you want him to. Uh, you can just open up his fingers and he can hold on to it like that. And, you know, it, it gives you posing options. I accidentally knocked in his noggin. But, you know, there we have that. You can have him wield his energy sword. Go ahead and grab his fist back out real quick. Straighten them out. There we go. Keep pushing in his head. My bad. Uh, energy sword. So, energy sword. There is a peg hole on the inside of his wrist, or I say on the inside of his wrist, kind of on the palm of his hand, right there. And uh, it will tab in to uh, that little peg, peg hole. There's a peg right here, and then just tabs in like so. Move the thumb out the way, and then. So it works with me. Come on. There we go. He can hold the Energon energy weapon, uh, which he uses to slash open Optimus's kind of rib area. So there you have that. And then you can get his other weapon that he uses against Optimus Prime, the blaster. And it's the same story with the blaster as it is the, uh, the mace. It just tabs in just like so. And you can actually get his finger... Uh, inside the trigger guard, which actually I really like. Kind of makes it look like he's actually shooting it, which is pretty cool. And so there's that. And then the little Crimson dude, you just kind of do whatever with him. Uh, he just kind of hangs out, does whatever. You can have him kind of sitting on his shoulder if you can balance him. Uh, the book, his little book, uh, shows him sitting in Megatron's hand, which I don't know how they got him to do that, but if you can do it, it's an option. So... There you have all the accessories and whatnot for Megatron. Now, I mean, for the articulation of the figure, you can pose him around. He's not great on articulation, truth be told. Um, the arms are kind of clunky to deal with. The legs are kind of fiddly due to all the panels and stuff. But, I mean, the head does have some joints in it, which allows it for... Uh, allows him to move around up and down arms can move out just about that far you can pose them around like so they do have elbow joints again but they are kind of clunky and only leave you with that range of movement there you also do have a swivel here at the elbow which technically you can use to get uh this look where the fusion cannon is kind of mounted to the side of his uh arm here uh, so if you wanted to do that you know there is an option for that as well so there's that. Um, so elbow swivel, very nice. Uh, wrist swivel, uh, you do have a ball joint here at the thumb. Each finger is individually articulated only at the knuckle. Um, only at the knuckle though. So there's the articulation for the arms. No waist swivel. You do have, uh, you do have leg joints here that are incredibly tight and a little bit squeaky. Um, outwards movement, a little... Uh, again, these panels kind of get in the way, but you do have uh, ratchets at the hip, which allow you to move outwards. Uh, you got a thigh swivel, um, a couple joints at the knee, which again, squeaky and are hard to use. And then you do got a ball joint at the feet, which allows for all sorts of movement. And that was folded out. I cannot believe that was out the whole time. There we go. But anyway, you do have a ball joint at the feet, so you can get this figure to balance. And the feet are completely die cast as well. You can see all the reflective metal and whatnot. And then they're just uh, die cast pieces throughout this entire figure. Like this whole frame back here is die cast, which is really cool. So the figure's got a nice little heft to him. 
uh, but you know, kind of straightening the figure out. There's a posability, not too much, but I mean, it is an older figure, so like we have to account for that. So MP5 Megatron here overall, it definitely does have its issues, but as a whole is a crown jewel in Transformers history marking. Again, the first masterpiece Megatron, and overall it's just a unique figure, trying some new things, but overall not completely succeeding as a whole, but as its own figure, it is really cool in its own right. But guys, that's all for me. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to leave a like, comment what you think of MP5 Megatron in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me, Champa Productions, signing off.